<clears throat> who is this Jehovah? Exodus 24, 1 and 2. Let's find out how many people is dealing, <clears throat> is dealing with this God. Exodus 24, verses 1 and 2. Let's go ahead, my brother. And he said unto Moses, come up unto the Lord. Thou shalt see the Son of Man sitting upon the mount of the congregation of the sons of Israel, and worship ye. How many people is this? He said, I want you to come. That's one. I want Aaron. That's two. I want Nadab. That's three. Abihu. That's four. And 70 of the elders. Well, four plus 70 is 74 people. Well, let's read about this 74 people and what and where they went and who they saw. Exodus 24. Let's go to verse nine. And ten. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nabai, and about and the seven elders of Israel. That's seventy-four people. And what did they do, Brother Joe? And they saw the God. And they saw. The God of they saw the God of Israel. Well, Jesus just told you that no man has ever seen my father. Well, if no man has ever seen the father, God the father, then who is the God of Israel? Who is this Jehovah? It could only be one, in, one individual. It could only be one being, brothers and sisters. And without a shadow of a doubt, that being is the Son. It is the Word. It is Yahshua. It is the one whom today the world knows as Jesus, brothers and sisters. Because they couldn't see the Father. So the only God that they could see, whose voice that they could hear, whose shape that they could see, brothers and sisters, was the Son. Continue reading at verse 10, and they saw the God of Israel, continue. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a shut by a stone, as it were the body of heaven in his clearness. Now the thing I love about God in his word is... If you thought you read something wrong, he'll come back and say it again. Now in verse 10, it says, they saw the God of Israel. Now... Read to me what verse 11 says. God says, in case you didn't get it the first time, let me reiterate it or say it to you again. Exodus 24, let's see what 11 says. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also they saw God and did eat and drink. Wait a minute. They saw God and did eat and drink? So not only did they see God, they sitting up there having dinner, having, having a, a conversation, sitting down, breaking bread, brothers and sisters. Who is this God that's communicating with these men whose voice they're able to hear, whose, whose shape they're able to see? Again, Jesus said, no man has ever seen my father or heard his voice at any time. Well, time started in the book of Genesis when God divided the light from darkness. The darkness he called night, the light he called day, and the evening and the morning were the first day. That's when time started. So since that moment up until the time Jesus spoke those words in the book of John, the first chapter, verse 18, and the fifth chapter, verse 37, no one, no man, that includes Moses, that includes Aaron, that includes Nadab, Abihu, and the 70 elders. So if they did not see the father, who was it that they saw? John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So the word is God. He's just the son. The father is the one who gives the son his power. The father does not deal with anything that's flesh and blood directly. 
That's why flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom of God because God don't deal with imperfection. The son's job is to deal with imperfection, brothers and sisters. And eventually his job is going to be to take this imperfect man and to bring him back to perfection. And once man is back in his perfected state as he was created in the beginning, then the father can communicate with him again. Then the father can deal with him again. But the father is not going to deal with anything that's sin or that's imperfect, brothers and sisters. Now, I know what some of you Jehovah Witnesses are going to say. Y'all going to say, well, Black Ice, I heard what you said. You made a very good argument, Black Ice. But there's one scripture that you can't get around. What's that, Mr. and Mrs. Jehovah Witness? Well, Black Ice, I want you to go and read the book of Psalms, the 83rd chapter and the 18th verse. Now, tell me how you're going to deal with that, Black Ice, because it says that Jehovah is the most high. Well, let's read it, brothers and sisters. Let's go to the book of Psalms, the 83rd chapter, verse 18. If this is truly a strip scripture that we can't get around, then you're right. Then this whole show tonight was flawed. It was in error. And I'm not above correction, brothers and sisters. But let's go ahead and entertain, for the sake of argument, this point that most Jehovah Witnesses will make to you after you make the point that Jehovah is not the Father, but He is the Son. Well, let's read it, Brother Joe. Psalms 83, 18. Let's go ahead and read it and find out the point that most Jehovah Witnesses will make and their point in proving that Jehovah is the Father, which we're saying tonight that Jehovah is the Son. Psalms 83 and 18. Let, let's read it, brother. That men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high. Over all the earth. So that's very interesting, brothers and sisters. How do we deal with this? That men may know, this is Psalms 83 and 18, that men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. That's a tough one right there. If you don't understand the Bible. It's a tough one if you're not called and chosen to preach this word. It's a tough one if God haven't given you divine understanding of his word. So let's break this down. I'm a poet, so my job is to break down words that men may know, that's including you and I, and everyone that's in a flesh and blood body that God created in his image. That's who it's referring to. He wanted us to know that the one whose name alone is Jehovah art the most high. We got that part. We're going to give you that because it says that. But the question is, who is it talking about? The father, the son. The interesting four words, brothers and sisters, that gives us our answer is the last four words of this verse. Because it only gives Jehovah the reign and the authority over what? Over all the earth. Well, if Jehovah was the father, then why wouldn't it say that we know that thou whose name alone is Jehovah art the most high over all heaven and earth? That's because Jesus is not the most high in heaven. The Father is. Jesus can only be the most high over all the earth. And since Jesus went by the name Jehovah in the Old Testament, it would also apply to the name Jehovah. That he is the most high, but only over all the earth. Because his Father is the most high in heaven. What are you going to do about that, brothers and sisters? There's no way around it. It's too high to get over. It's too deep to get under. So you ask the question, well, Black Ice, 
If Jehovah is the name of the Son, then what is the name of the Father? What is the name of the Father? Well, he told you, brothers and sisters. What did he say? Well, let's read it, Brother Joe. We're going to go, brothers and sisters, as our last um, scripture of tonight. And I'm typing it in. That's the beauty um, of the internet, that you can type it in. And let's go to 2 Chronicles verse 7, um, chapter 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Let's find out what the Father's name is, brothers and sisters. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Let's find out what the Father's name is. Since we know that Jehovah is the name of the Son, let's find out what the Father's name is. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. 2nd Chronicles chapter 7 brothers and sisters and we're going to go ahead and close out our show and then we're going to go to the phone lines and take questions and answers and find out what the listeners thought about tonight's show and the phone number is also above this video brothers and sisters so you can call in if you would like 2nd Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 Go ahead, my brother. If my people which are called my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Brothers and sisters, who are the people that are called by the name of God? If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. God chose the people, brothers and sisters. And that people goes by the name of Israel. Because we were and we are named after the name of the Father, brothers and sisters. If my people who are called by my name. It's as simple and plain as that. We're looking for a complex answer, but unfortunately, for, the, for those who are thinking that the answer would be complex, it's not complex at all. The Father's name is Israel, brothers and sisters, and he named us after him. We are the chosen people of God. We are the sons and daughter of Israel. The people who are named after the Father. We thank you for listening to tonight's show, brothers and sisters. We pray that you were edified and that God was glorified on tonight's show, brothers and sisters. And I pray that anything that have come out of my mouth have been um, based on this book called the Bible and has been the truth, brothers and sisters. And if it's anything that you have found that I have said that is in error, then please show me the truth and I will come back on this show and I will correct it live as I had given it live, brothers and sisters. But again, we try not to say anything that's not written in this book. We try not to... Uh, Go deviate out of the boundaries of this book called the Bible so that we can be in line with the word of God, brothers and sisters. So we're going to go ahead and conclude this for our YouTube listeners. You can go and look at this video back in full on YouTube or when we end our Facebook live feed, you can go back and look at it on Facebook live also as well, brothers and sisters. With that being said, YouTube listeners, we thank you. Facebook Live listeners, hold on. We're going to go ahead and go straight to the phone lines. If you want to be added to our text message invite list, then text your name and the keyword Truth Hour to 312-719-7310. Text your name and the keyword Truth Hour to 312-719-7310. If you want a text message reminder right before we go live on air, Text your name and the keyword Truth Hour to 312-719-7310. Thank you so much, YouTube.